All right, so I'm Connor Archard, and over here is Farron Chen. And we made a uh, plotter that does rapid circuit prototyping. Um, so essentially, we got an old plotter, a high plot uh, from 1983, that we took all of the electronics and internals out of and put in our own Atmega uh, 1284P. Um, so what we have here is the Atmega, an LCD to display kind of what the thing's doing. Um, and then a lot of motor control circuits over here to drive the uh, plotter head in the X and Y axis and to actuate this solenoid to raise and lower the pen. Um, all of this is being powered by a few different power supplies. We have this uh, big guy over here that's powering all the motors on this giant capacitor just to stabilize everything. Uh, and then we have the 9 volt line going to the Atmega which powers all of the uh, ADCs and stuff. The way that we're tracking the position of the plotter head is through these servo potentiometers that are basically collared onto the drive shaft for the motors. So we're constantly reading in a 10-bit ADC value to determine where the location of the plotter head currently is. Um, to actually generate the circuits that we're printing, we're connected via the UART to Farron's laptop over here. Uh, do you want to explain the web app a little bit? So the server is running on my computer and it's communicating with the website which is so like uh, any computer sitting in the local internet, uh, local ethernet can have access to the server. It, the communication via ethernet it's just like uh, like a normal application when you have a printer sitting in the office and everybody in the office can have access and print whatever document they're currently loading their do mm -hmm. in their computer. So the idea is, goes from there. And to print a uh, circuit you can just draw in this web panel? Go ahead. Yeah. So we have this web page loaded, so we're just going to draw. Uh, you double click to end the line, so we'll just draw a few lines that are parallel here. This will be our VCC. Then we'll draw a set of browns right here, another parallel set. Um, the continuity for the pen and just the conductance in the pen that we're using for the conductive ink isn't superb, so it's great to make kind of like too many lines instead of not enough lines, it's definitely the thing to do. So we're just going to hook up uh, these lines right here so we can demonstrate two LEDs turning on in between these two connections. So now we say send and print vectors by pressing that button. It says it did it. And then we go over to the printer. Right now it's waiting for the user to press the button for uh, downloading the input. So you press this button, it downloads the frame from the server. Um, once it's finished downloading the frame, it'll say that it's ready to print, and now the plotter head is going to start moving and actually draw out the lines. So, like we said earlier, the conductivity for the pen isn't that great, or like really not as good as advertised or what we thought it was going to be. So, we have the plotter trace the line back and forth five times just to make sure that a lot of ink is laid down so it's more conductive. Um, so those are the VCC lines again. Here are the ground lines that we're drawing. So your, your resolution is one part in a thousand. Um, it didn't quite work out that well due to uh, the inertia that the motors have when they're moving. You essentially end up with an accuracy of about a tenth of an inch, uh, and then when you start moving back and forth it degrades more to like a fifth of an inch sometimes, unfortunately. Um, but that probably uh, would have been reduced if we uh, were able to get enough ink laid down on a single trace and not have to really like go back and forth. Um, so you'll notice it's printing some sideways lines. That's kind of a byproduct of needing to double click to end a trace on the web app. Um, sometimes it just gives a second little uh, blip to the side. But anyway, you so now you, see the circuit printed here. So, you, so you've drawn a circuit. Yep. So now we can take the circuit off the paper. And you'll notice that right now we're back to the waiting for user to press button stage. Uh -huh. So if we were to press this button again, it would, it would draw. draw that paint again. But there's also a clear frame button. So if you press the clear frame button on the website, you can draw a new thing to print and then print a second we circuit. We'll come back and demo the second one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so for now, we're going to take this. We're going to take the circuit pen, um, getting the actual alligator clips uh, to connect is a little difficult with these like pinpoints, so what we're going to do is just do a little bit of scratchy, budging in here. Yeah. Sp scratchy, scratchy there to, yeah. just to fold it get the electrons there. flowing a little better. So then we're going to fold it over here. So this is ground right there. Mm -hmm. And then this is VCC right there. Let me turn it on. It's somewhere around 4 volts. So now we'll see if we actually got any continuity. 
Up, oh, yep, there's a yep, little flash. Yep, there we yep. go. So oh, look at that. That one's working. There's another LED around here that we can throw somewhere like that. It's a little difficult to get these to work without the circles. This guy has big circular pads at the bottom, so it can pick but up you, on the trace right, as well. So, you're, but so you're, you're clearly passing current through there, and yes. you can light the LED. Yep. And the resistance across these lines is about 100 ohms, actually. It's, like I said, not very conductive ink at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, but it's enough to actually pass current and make working circuits, which is pretty neat, we think. That's very so. cool. So the applications we think about this one is for industry use. So in if in industry you, you want to produce a lot of mass produced prototypes of circuits that you can rapidly produce uh, a lot of copies of it really quickly mm -hmm. without having to uh, produce PCBs, which is, takes a long design period of time. This is like very cheap on any piece of paper. Once we have a more conductive ink, this is like a very viable industry yeah. product. Well, I'm, I'm thinking for teaching, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. That would be also awesome. for having it like an iterative design process with uh, printed circuit boards, it'll take you basically like a month if you have to change a single trace you messed up on your printed circuit board, whereas this you can just reload the web app and print it off in a few minutes, if, if even so. Very uh, cool. We're pretty happy with how it turned out. Yeah, Very cool. cool. So you're going to clear that. So you, why don't you draw something here? So printed, I can press this button again, it downloads the frame. And you'll notice the text that's going across the LCD. Ooh, forgot to put the pen in. Oh well, we can print it again. But anyway, <laughs> um, the text that's going across the frame is a set of uh, coordinates and that? machine code for the uh, solenoid to raise or lower the pen. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of similar to the way that Gerber files work. Uh, our end goal for this was actually to be able to parse in a Gerber file and then print based on something that you could find online to get a sort of open source hardware uh, community working. Um, but at the end of the day, we just didn't really have time to figure out how to make our own sample Gerber files that we could parse out. So. The right. product that we were using is the uh, standard Gerber syntax. So okay. we are able to parse it if you well, I, the communication is basically via HTTP, and then the serial port is like a protocol we designed their own. Our own. There's a handshake of figuring out how big its file is going to be transmitted, and also like it successfully got and ready to get the next command. Okay. So it goes line by line. Okay, fire it off again. Now yeah. you did. Okay. Yep. So this is should be what everyone was drawing. So, uh, how much did the old plotter cost you? I found it for 20 bucks on Craigslist. Some guy, uh, local actually, has a bunch of these in his garage and was trying to get rid of them, so he was happy get, when I came by. You get how much these were originally? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's something in the thousands, but I, I could I be wrong. I think it was probably three to five thousand, yeah. <laughs> something in there. Yeah, it's a, so the, so really what, what, what you bought was a, a precision mechanical device. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, can open this up after we're done drawing the circuit if you'd like to see kind of the insides of it. But mm -hmm. we really just wanted something that would allow us to have really smooth motion in uh, the two dimensions, even when you raise and lower the solenoid. We realized right. that that was kind of beyond our abilities. But um, right. there's a lot of hardware we don't use in here. Do you want to open it up and yeah, look at it? Yeah, let's take a quick right, look cool. underneath, so, real quick. We'll uh, quick. remove all the power supplies. We've gotten like. Really good luck so far with not blowing up that capacitor. I'd really like to keep it that way. Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, good idea. And I yeah, highly disconnect agree. Disconnect everything from here. There are the serial cable. Is that done? Okay. So, we flip it up. Here we have a screwdriver. They're just oops, a few screws that I have. Ah, uh, the bicycle generator kicks on again. Yep. So, in here, 
you have wow all this stuff from 1983 or 82. Um, we don't use any of this board, just to be clear. It was just there and it seemed like it was a lot of extra work to remove it when we didn't need to. We don't use this power supply or anything like that. All that we really use are these motors down here. We have one here for the y-axis and one here for the x-axis. And you can see through a belt and a pulley system, they're collared onto these duct tape messes that are the servo potentiometers to make sure that you have a agreement of mm -hmm. rotation from mm -hmm. one to one. Mm -hmm. um, and duct tape ended up working just because, I don't know, I talked to some mechanical engineers and they said welding and duct tape are really your two options and this one seemed a bit safer. With well, the it, it, seems, it, it seems like a, a good bet. They do make flex joints yeah. also, but you effectively made your own flex joint. Yeah. And I doubt if it slips. It doesn't. Yeah, so, we haven't noticed it at least. There's the other one over there. Yep. Very cool. 